the hot burning sand. You've already been riding the goat. And you've been getting, you're not a member of the board of directors. You, you always the one that gets the board. So you've already been through the initiation. So when you come in, you come in with 90 degrees. When you get the student enrollment in the actual facts and hit one or two of these lectures, you've got 90 degrees. You can handle any grand master. Huh? You can handle any grand matron. Because the black grand matron and the black uh, grand master really is supposed to be here. That's the truth. That is knowledge. 32 degrees that were, were given to white people to rule for a limited period of time. So they were given limited knowledge for a limited period. Not much, hell, if we would have been given any more than that, we would never get out of this condition. You see what they've been able to do with that. You still with me? So God is the supreme being. Now what does, there are three ways of spelling damn. D-A-M, not talking about that which blocks water, but you can spell dam, D-A-M, according to the so-called lexicographers, Webster and the Thorndike and the other boys, D-A-M-N and D-A-M-N-E-D. All three mean the same thing depending on the usage of the term. What does dam mean? Damn or damned means to be condemned to hell. To be sentenced, convicted, or condemned to hell. Right. To be meted out the punishment of hell's fire and hell's destruction. That's what damn means. And so if somebody says the God damn white man, that's not cursing. That's not blasphemy. It is only, it's not using God's name in vain, fool. Right. Only God can damn a thing. Right. Nobody else has the power to convict it, to condemn it, to sentence it to hell, and to destroy it completely and utterly, except God himself. So when you say God damned the thing, then that means ain't no bringing that thing back. The Holy Quran says, he or she that Allah exalts is exalted indeed. But he or she that Allah debases or brings down, no one can raise them up. So when God damns you, when God sentences you, when God convicts you, when God condemns you to the death and doom and destruction of hell, then there is nothing that can bring you back. So when we say that God damn white man, it's not to be vulgar, it's not to be blasphemous, it's not to be cursing, but it is to say that God has damned the white man. God has condemned the white man. God has sentenced and convicted the white man, and his world is coming down. And your world, it is time for your world to come up again. The goddamn white man. Who are we talking about? Who? We're talking about the who? We're talking about the goddamn white man. Now, some of you may say, well, that's a pretty slick explanation, but I'm still going to call Chicago on you. It was in this very city that Minister Farrakhan, when he was the young spokesman and representative for the Nation of Islam, he spoke at Manual Arts High School. Right. And he taught a subject on the white man being a bastard, the white woman being a bitch, and the children of the white woman being sons of bitches. <laughs> and people were sitting in the audience in shock. But when he got through explaining that thing, and defining that thing, and unlocked our minds to that thing, I mean, the audience was rocking. But some jaws were tight and they wouldn't call on Elijah Muhammad. Do you know, dear apostle, that Minister Farrakhan came out here and he was up there using all kinds of language in, at Manual Arts High School. But one day we will go into that. How the white man is a bastard. How the white woman is a bitch. That's a dog. That's all it is. And how the children are sons of bitches. 
We'll go into that one day. From an academic, religious, and spiritual perspective. We'll stay away from the vulgar. All right? He taught that subject. How many were at manual arts when Minister Farrakhan taught that subject? Some as one, two, very a few of them were around at that time. Some have heard the tape. But today, the goddamn white man. There was even a book out called The Goddamn White Man. When Minister Malcolm X used to speak in Harlem, he used to speak on that famous corner, and the bookstore behind him had a big banner on the front of the store that said The Goddamn White Man. God has damned, condemned, convicted, and sentenced the white man's world to hell. His dollar is in trouble. His dollar is not respected on the foreign market the way it used to be. Huh? The financial capitals and centers of the world, for the most part, were stationed in America, Wall Street and others. Now of the ten, over five, maybe six, seven or more, are now in Japan. America has fallen behind in technology, fallen behind in science, fallen behind in mathematics. Where she used to be the number one lender nation of the world, she is now the number one debtor nation of the world. She has a serious balance of payment deficit that runs into the trillion dollar figure. Huh? And all her great, excuse me, minds of economics and finance can't balance the books for America. America is coming down. America is falling. So the scripture says Babylon the Great is falling, is falling. She has become the habitation of devils. Huh? The hole of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. This is that mystery Babylon that the book of Revelations is talking about that is now falling. It is the habitation of devils. And God has condemned America and the destruction of America is because of you. He's sending rain, irregular rain, snow, hail, and earthquake today. Twisters and tornadoes today. Because of America's wicked mistreatment of God's chosen people that are here in the midst of this no good beast. So when God damns America, condemns America, you shouldn't get in the way. But some of you get angry. I, 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 I can't go along with that. God has not condemned white people. That's so silly. You're the one that's silly. You should want God to step in and intervene, intervene for you. All the hell you've been catching from this crap. Over 400 years of slavery, suffering, and death. A strange fruit that hangs from the trees with blood at the root. Who was that Bessie Smith or Billie Holiday used to sing it? Strange fruit in the south with, uh, on the trees with blood at the root. That strange fruit was the black man and the black woman hanging from the trees. Huh? Drowned us in the lakes, the rivers, the brooks, and the streams. Burned us alive. Cut our black women's stomachs open, pregnant, and snatched the babies from their stomach and crushed the baby under their boot heel. <laughs> Tie horses and oxen to them while they're pregnant, eight, nine months, and beat the horses and make them run in opposite directions and tear a body apart so the black baby could fall from her. I'm talking about the goddamn white man. But some of you today, you like a milk toast, sissified, punkified kind of teaching where we're talking about, well, maybe we'll be able to get along together. <laughs> After all, we do have a man running for president. Hell, that's all he's doing is running. It's a pursuit he'll never catch up with. 
Should be run out of town by sundown.